what is up everybody uh first off i want to say that i hope everyone had a lovely uh thanksgiving weekend i hope it was well spent with family and uh loved ones and some uh dope ass food i unfortunately uh spent thanksgiving alone here at the university of hawaii i'm gonna um, the food was amazing. I want to give a shout out to the Aloha Cafe Cafeteria and its and its dope staff uh, for hooking it up. Um, you know that was a that was a, that was a bomb on a rather lonely day. Um, so I hope everyone had a good Thanksgiving. Uh, as always, we'll do uh, some brief Rams talk, but today's episode is not going to be primarily about Rams talk. So on our last episode, we did a preview uh, of sorts for the Rams versus the Buccaneers. Long story short, uh, we kicked ass. We didn't kick ass, but we did get the victory. It was a much needed victory. And while it didn't immediately secure a playoff position, what it did do was um, really boost the probability and our chances of a playoff berth. I'm really confident now. Um you know, going into the final quarter of the season, which we're just about at, uh, that the Rams will carry some momentum into the postseason. But, and that brings us to today, we did not win today against our true individual rival, our Northern brothers, um, our Bay Area brothers, our San Francisco 49ers uh, defeated us at home in um stan canyon 23 to 20 is the final score Altogether, you know i didn't watch the entirety of the game you know we recorded some pods today side note uh we got two pods coming up here in our final stretch of the closers podcast with a series regular and a dear friend of mine terrell tucker great stuff as always he brings it and A very special episode we got coming in um, here in the final stretch. An OG of the A-team, a 1040 captain, Spencer, the the soldier, the king of Galt, Cyphers. um, Dear friend of ours, uh, someone that we came up with at uh, the store 1040. Uh, If we're the closers, Spencer was the opener. And uh, just a, a dear friend and a real cool conversation. We talk a lot of football and uh, we kind of reminisce and shoot the shit. But I digress. Rams 49ers. Didn't watch the entirety of the game, but from what I did watch, I wasn't I wasn't I wasn't mad at our defense. I thought our defense performed actually very well, all things considered. I mean, every time we play the Niners, win or lose, it's gonna be a dog fight which is how divisional games should be. Our defense this week, we made big plays. Uh, Nick Mullins, who was the starting quarterback for the San Francisco 49ers in place of uh, Jimmy G, threw an interception. Um, Aaron Donald had a big day. He had a sack, strip sack. Morgan Fox had a sack. Um, Jordan Fuller, who had two interceptions, uh, the first two interceptions of his career against Tom Brady. Gets another one um, against Nick Mullins, where we really fell short. And, um, man, it's kind of a bummer to say this. Number 16, under center, Jared. And our offensive line struggled today, man. Struggled in our protection, you know, really missing big Andrew Whitworth now. Um, But beyond that, I would really love to see some better decision decision making in moments of crisis from Jared um, from Jared golf that is on one play it was at the center is at maybe third down of the second half Jared drops back three steps pocket collapses and Jared in fucking like a two-step just like a drag route just I don't even know if he was looking at Cooper Cup but he throws it, and it's intercepted by the uh, defensive lineman. Pick six. That's, I mean, that's essentially what, you know, that was the difference in the game. That touchdown there, you know, gave uh, San Francisco the points necessary to win. It wasn't the final um, 
uh, the winning score, but, you know, it was the prerequisite. Debo Samuel, wide receiver for the 49ers, had a career day, 11 receptions for 133 yards. Uh, Darius Williams, who's been lights out this season, did drop an interception. I mean, it is what it is. You know, it's a shitty loss. It does move us out of first place in the NFC West to back behind Seattle for second place. But, uh, you know, I don't, I, I can't hang my head against, against, you know, Seattle. I mean, excuse me, how dare I against San Francisco, you know, you win some, you lose some. Unfortunately, this year we were swept, excuse me, by the 49ers, which is disappointing, man. But, you know, they always this just seem to give us fits. You know, we could be in a 2-12 and 12 season or a 12-4 and four season. And, uh, you know, the Niners are going to play. It's like it's the Super Bowl every week or every time, I should say. Uh, it was a great game. It was a fun game to watch. Uh, but unfortunately, we did not get it done. It is what it is. We'll bounce back. I'm highly calm. I'm still confident in our team. I'm still supremely confident in our defense. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Cam Akers, who is starting to uh, turn it on. He's starting to show flashes of perhaps he could inherit a, uh, a full-on starting position. We haven't had a full-on starting, you know, three-down running back since Todd Gurley last year. Cam Akers, I believe, is showing flashes of that. I want to read his stat line. Nine carries for 83, 84 yards, 9.3 yards per carry average, one touchdown, and a 61-yard run was his longest carry of the day. I'm really liking the progression I'm seeing out of our young players, Cam Akers, Jordan Fuller, Van Jefferson, all of which made big plays last week against Tampa Bay. So I think, you know, I think the future is bright for the Rams. No cause for concern yet. No cause for concern yet. But uh, moving on from football and getting into a more, um, I don't know if it's timely discussion or, you know, I'm not sure what it is, man. I'm not sure if it's COVID fatigue. But I'm just, uh, I'm, I don't, I don't know if disillusioned is the right word. Let me say this. I am a fucking proud Californian. I'm a proud Northern Californian. I was born Calaveras County. Actually, excuse me, Tuolumne County. I was born in Sonora, Tuolumne County, uh, right above Calaveras. Uh, grew up in Calaveras County before I left California for Kentucky. I'm a born Californian, Northern Californian, man. I, you know. I, I'm, it's I'm immensely proud of that. I'm I'm proud of our people, of our Northern Californian people, man. There's a work ethic that you'll find in Northern California that that I think rivals many other places in this country. And there's a generosity and a, there's a culture to Northern California and a diversity of culture that I think is unique and a beautiful thing. I love Northern California. I love being a Californian. That being said. I am utterly and completely disgusted and repulsed by the actions of our governor, Gavin Newsom, uh, recently. You know, do as I say, not as I do, is uh, seems to be the prevailing thought when it comes to Gavin Newsom. Cases are on the rise in California. The second surge is happening. It was an inevitability. We know this. The federal government this past year has failed us as an American populace. Not to my surprise, to be honest with you. There is a starch and complete utter disconnect between those who check into Washington and those who check in at a time clock in Elk Grove, California, in Stockton, California, in North Platte, Nebraska, in Hopkinsville, Kentucky. Make no mistake, ladies and gentlemen, whether it's Gavin Newsom, whether it's Mitch McConnell, whether it's fucking Karen Bass or Kamala Harris, or it's fucking Rubio, Marco Rubio or Ted Cruz, any of these motherfuckers, they do not understand what you have gone through or are going through this year. Make no mistake. There is a disconnect. 
they live comfortably while you toil, while you boil under that Californian sun, and now you toil in a Californian winter to make ends meet. They, they, they are draped in finery. They live in comfort and decadence. How can we expect them to give a fuck about us? Now, I don't mean to sound all doom and gloom. Donald Trump has lost the presidency. Hooray. Clamp your hands. Sing in the streets. But there is something that is ideologically very wrong with this country. And I'm not sure if it's because of the size of this country. I'm not sure if it's the way our political system is set up. But there is something very wrong. Gavin Newsom, who has uh, been attempting to instruct um, or to encourage, uh, you know, stricter restrictions, I guess you could say, on uh, on Californians, who's been pushing for people to stay at home, don't see your family, you know, if you're sick. Don't go to work, regardless if you need a paycheck. This sort of rhetoric. Well, Gavin Newsom was, uh, I guess, photographed, paparazzi almost, I guess you could say, uh, in Napa Valley at the uh, birthday celebration for a uh, lobbyist, I guess you could say. Yeah, lobbyist uh, at uh, French Laundry, which is a uh, high-end restaurant in Napa Valley. Um, I'm going to pull some stats here from the New York Times. From the Times. And I quote, Blurry photos from the dinner capture a careless Gatsby-esque old sport vibe. The governor, that is Newsom, seated next to top officials for the California Medical Association. At the boardroom, where the party appears to be held, Crick's Fix Meals can start at $450 per person. The political power broker and Gavin Newsom mentor, Willie Brown, wrote that he heard the meal's wine bill alone was over 12 stacks. Further on in the Times, uh, I quote, Coming during a profound economic and public health crisis, the incident reinforces the notion that the state government, indeed the government all across the country, is a bureaucratic dysfunction and aristocratic indifference. A mess of bureaucratic dysfunction and aristocratic indifference. The starkest example in California is the state is the state's stumbles in the performing the basic function of dispensing unemployment benefits. The state's jobless rate, which peaked in May at 16% in October, dipped below double digits for the first time. Though the new spike in COVID cases seems sure to reverse the trend. Blah, 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 blah. As usual, the burden falls hardest on the poor and working class. Wonk, wonk, wonk. That's what I heard. Wonk, wonk, wonk. State government doesn't give a fuck about you. It doesn't give a fuck about me. It never has and it never will. It cares about the bottom dollar. They say you can't put a value on a human life. Well, the United States government and your state government has put a value on your life. And you now know how cheap you are. I certainly feel cheap. I certainly feel expendable. Governor Whitmer of Michigan, uh, not too long ago, proposed a $100 million uh, state stimulus package uh, from her state legislator. I don't know whether it's going to go through or not. I don't know about the prospects or not. But I will tell you this. I appreciate the effort of Governor Whitmer to propose her own state stimulus package. And I can't help but wonder, where is Governor Newsom's 
proposed state stimulus package. If the state of Michigan is asking for $100 million, I can't help but think that the state of California could ask for a fucking billion or half a billion. The fifth biggest economy in the world. The state of California provides the rest of this country with its fucking dinner. The state of California does not need the rest of this country, but the rest of this country needs the state of California. Make no fucking mistake. It's astounding to me. I always had a sort of sneaking suspicion of uh, of the political elite's um, true perspective towards uh, everyone else. Towards the uh, towards the poor towards the uh, working class. Um, Jesus Christ, man. Has it never been more evident that there is a proletariat and a bourgeoisie? An American proletariat and American bourgeoisie. An elitist and a working class. And those who are in control seek only to expand their control at the cost of said working class. I think my frustration comes in such a large part with Governor Newsom, um, partly because beyond the hypocrisy of, you know, French laundry and all that shit. Side note, fuck Napa Valley. Fuck Napa Valley. Beautiful. All concede. Beautiful. Beautiful land. And the employees there are, uh, you know, the people who live there, the people who work there are, you know, I got nothing bad to say about these people, you know, but for fuck's sakes. You know, it's just one of those things. It's, it's a for fuck's sakes sort of thing. You know, what you're doing isn't wrong, but at the same time, it's just like, dude, what the fuck? It's fuckery. Fuckery abound. Napa Valley. Fuckery abound. That should be on the fucking sign. But I think my disappointment with uh, with with Governor Newsom comes in the fact that I know or I can see that his political aspirations do not end with California. Say what you will, but this it's it's an inevitability that this man is going to run for president. I mean, he could have ran for president as mayor of San Francisco. And now on his resume, it will say that he was the governor of the fifth largest economy in the world. And while it is marred with controversy and uh, those of us who, you know, are just utterly and completely disappointed. Do as I say, not as I do. What fucking bullshit. It's bumming me out just talking about it. So let's talk about something else. Final thought, Gavin Newsom, fuck you. Use a bitch. Get it right, dog. Hey, get it right. Make it right. Propose a state stimulus package and make it right. But beyond that, Let's move forward. Let's let's move to something a little bit more interesting. I'm not sure if you guys have seen the movie 2001 A Space Odyssey. Personally, I find it to be vastly overrated as far as narrative uh, speaking. Um, technically, it's an absolutely beautiful and astounding film and a landmark in cinema. But in Utah, there was a monolith, eerily um, reminiscent of the monolith from 2001. This one was silver. The one in 2001 was black. 
And uh, it was just one of those rare things, man, like a Bigfoot sighting or a Loch Ness or a fucking Lugia flying in the sky, erupting out of the ocean to help Ash and his friends save the day. It was a it was a healthy distraction. But clearly not of alien origin. I saw a video of a gentleman who approached the monolith. I was nervous. He touched the monolith. I was less nervous when nothing happened to him. And when he brought the camera close to the monolith, you could see rivets. You could see the screws. You could see Philip's heads. And I thought, God damn it, it's of humankind. It's of human nature. How disappointing. But nonetheless, a thankful reprieve from what was, uh, on a grander scale, kind of a disappointing Thanksgiving. But on a personal scale, eh, not too bad. Not too bad. Not too bad. <laughs> Excuse me. I've been dancing with Miss Rona. She's a tall bitch. <clears throat> Kidding aside, I'm not sick. Next week, I will be coming to you um, back from uh, back from California. I am flying back to California uh, this Thursday. Personally, I'm very, I'm very excited, man. Coming to uh, coming to UH this fall was almost like, like an extended quarantine. To be a hundred percent honest with you, um, I'm sure there will be an episode before we wrap uh, wrap this program up, reflecting on the uh, on the successes and the failures of uh, UH Manoa and it's in this respect. But I'm ready to get the hell out of here, man. I'm ready to go home. I'm ready to see my family, see my cats, see my dog, and uh, see my peoples, man. See my peoples. See my homies. I can't stress enough in this pandemic. Um, personal health. Supplementation, vitamin D, vitamin C, iron, zinc. You could take these things and it would be a benefit to you. As well as living an active lifestyle would also be beneficial to you. More so now than ever. And I think I'm about to go hit a run here in a couple of minutes to get my mind off this uh, political fuckery that has pervaded me. So, anywho, as always, um, I want to thank you guys for stopping by. I do want to encourage you guys to uh, to keep a keen eye out for uh, upcoming episodes, not just of Hang Ten, but of our closing our closers network. Uh, this past Friday, Marco released uh, the Closing Out the Week with Marco Alvarado. I thought it was a very good episode. I highly encourage you to check it out. The Closers Podcast, uh, which can be found on YouTube, our own channel. You can find Hang 10, this episode and past episodes on the Closers Podcast YouTube channel, as well as our flagship program, The Closers Podcast. Uh, we have two episodes upcoming, uh, that feature Terrell Tucker. As I stated earlier, it's a great episode. Highly encourage you to check it out. And, uh, our old pal Spencer Cyphers. We also have, uh, Gabby the Goose coming up and, uh, maybe some more surprises. So highly encourage you guys to check that out. Um, I think we're putting out some good content here in our, in our, as we're rounding out third base and heading to home. So. You can follow me on Instagram at quintessential39. That's quintessential with two N's, basically my first name and essential or tessential. 
Uh, you can follow Marco at Marco underscore Avocado, A-V-A-C-A-D-O. And you can follow the Closers Podcast on Instagram at The Closers Podcast and Facebook at Closers Podcast. Drop the the. As always, I am your host, Quinn Kalani. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, Stay safe. Stay smart. God bless. Let's all take a deep breath. 2020 is almost over, y'all. We're pushing through.